What the fuck did I just watch? Huh? What the fuck did I just watch? <sighs> Fucking the Garbage Pail Kids movie. <laughs> yeah, the movie is a pile of garbage. It's exactly what I expected it would be a movie. Exactly what I expected a movie that was called, had garbage in the title would be. A pile of stinking, rank, ass-smelling garbage. But, unlike the Nostalgia Critic, Doug Walker, who I like his videos and I really do enjoy them, he said that this is the worst film that he's seen and reviewed. I have to be honest. From my personal experience, I have seen much worse in the Garbage Pail Kids movie. I have seen a lot worse than this. Um, Curse of the Blue Lights. Uh, Blood Voyage. Uh... Crash, the 1977 movie, which is about some guy who uses the psychic powers to make some dog try to kill some dude. Um, Demon fucking warrior. See, I've seen those movies. Okay. And my friend Matt's seen some shitty movies too, like Theaters 1 and 2, that probably would make, literally, literally makes this look like a masterpiece in comparison. So, yeah, I've, I've seen worse than the Garbage Belt Kids movie. But it's still... It's, it's a piece of shit. Instead of a whole giant piece of shit, it's a, just a little tiny piece of shit. Instead of a whole shit. But it's still a piece of shit. It's still a shitty movie. It was still a fucking disaster. It was awful. It was terrible. I didn't want to fucking I didn't want to finish watching it. But I did. And uh, hopefully I'll get at least an entertaining rant out of it for you guys. Fucking garbage pail kids. Fuck the garbage pail kids. First off, I was never a fan. Of, I, I never really was ever really that into garbage pail kids trading cards. And who in the right mind thought that this would be a good idea for a movie? Yeah, trading cards. Mars attacks. And my work. It's aliens invading Earth. Okay, but fucking nasty ass garbage pail kids who look like demented cabbage patch kid dolls with like their powers are like, oh, I could fart. And I can puke, and I'm just gross. And I'm like, ooh, that's not absolutely what exactly what I want to see on the big screen. No. No wonder this was a flop. Nobody wanted to fucking see it. I don't blame people. Even kids didn't go see this movie. Well, I mean, some kids did, but not a lot. Because, because, because I'm on. I mean, really. Surprises! I haven't heard ideas of a reboot of this. Actually, I remember I did. I, I swear to God, I thought I remember seeing reading an article a while back. It was like they're thinking about rebooting the Garbage Pail Kids. Why? Why the fuck would you want to reboot this shit? This shit is horrible. Uh, yeah, it was made for. It had an, a million a million dollar budget, and it made a million five hundred seventy six thousand six hundred fifteen dollars. So it actually made a profit? That's sad. Really, I don't care. It's not that much of a profit. I understand it's like five hundred bucks, but that's five hundred. That's five hundred. That's five hundred sixty. No, it's like five hundred sixty. Five hundred seventy-six thousand six hundred fifteen dollars. It shouldn't have gotten. Fucking garbage pail kids movie. Anyway, movies are rented by Rod Amatow. Well, Let's be Rod Amateur. Cause he, well, I mean, I guess he did direct some stuff. I mean, oh, the last thing he directed was Sunset with Bruce Willis, a movie that nobody remembers he directed. And he directed a few movies like in the 50, one in the 50s called The Bushwhackers, one in, in 1969 he was just a writer on for, oh, he was just a writer for Sunset. But he directed Pussycat, Pussycat, I Love You in 1970. He directed Where Does It Hurt in 1972. After watching this movie, Rod, it hurts all over. It hurts everywhere. Okay? I put my head down to my toes. It hurts. It's pain. Just all that fucking pain. I'm considering going to the doctor later. They have this checked out. I have the doctor try to do something about the pain this movie has caused me. Uh, but, um, like I said, it's not the worst I've ever seen, but it's still one of, it's still one of the worst. It's not the worst movie I've ever seen, but it's still one of the worst. And uh, then he read some movie called Drive In. Yeah, Drive In My Goddamn Forehead so it can stop this pounding headache I have right now after watching this shit. 
doesn't get any grosser than this, or like it doesn't get any shittier than this. Well, it does get shittier, but it gets, I mean, I'm just saying, like, you could get worse, but still, it's still pretty fucking bad. So, and then he didn't direct anything for almost a decade until the Garbage Pail Kids movie, and that was the end of his career as a director. I don't believe <laughs> And he also wrote the screenplay along with Melinda Palmer. And it's based on the Garbage Pail Kids trading cards. And stars Mackenzie Aston, who is the younger brother of Sean Aston, as Dodger. Uh, Anthony Newley is Captain Manzini. Katie Barberi is Tangerine. Yeah, her name is Tangerine. Uh, Ron McLaughlin as Juice. Fucking asshole, beating up on little kids. <laughs> I mean, what dick? And yeah, he. This is his biggest role. He doesn't even have a picture on IMDb. So, shows you how well his career <laughs> his career went up after this movie. Um, Majori Gru, Garu as Blythe. John Herman Shainer as pol as a police officer. Patty Lloyd as foster mother. There was a foster mother in this. I've never seen John Cade is the bartender. The Garbage Pail Kids were played by Phil Von DeCaro, played Greaser Greg. Phil Von DeCaro might be familiar to you. It's a horror buffs out there. He's been in a few number of full moon flicks. He was also in uh, Willow as Von Carr. Jim Cummings is the voice of Greaser Greg. Uh, Debbie Lee Cumming, De Debbie Lee Carrington played Valerie Von Vomit. Uh, Debbie Lee Carrington is the same actress, a uh, little person actress, who was in Total Recall. Remember the, the dwarf that was in Total Recall? Well, she played that dwarf in Total Recall, kicked some ass, so that was, okay. It's kind of interesting. At least she got Total Recall after this. That's something. Kevin Thompson plays Allie Gator, who I met guiltily, was, I actually didn't mind the character. I don't know what it was. It kind of reminded me of Raphael, because he had the same sort of Brooklyn accent, and then, you know, but... He liked to eat toes, so I don't know if that has anything to do with Raphael. I don't know why. I, I, I didn't mind that character for some reason. Out of all the Garbage Pail Kids, I didn't mind Alligator. Uh, Robert Bell as Foul Phil. Chloe Amato, the director's daughter, as Foul Phil's voice. Larry Green as Nat Nerd. Jim Cummings as Nat Nerd's voice. Arturo Gill as Wendy Winston. Arturo Gill is the, is the same guy. as He's Wendy Winston. He's the same guy who played one of the Dink Dinks in Spaceballs, and he played Station in, Sp in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Well, hey, after this, he still got to play Station, so. Station! Uh, yeah, Station! But, um, Sue Rosito plays Messi Tessie, and Ted Terry Benaren played Messi Tessie's voice. This movie's so bad, it has a 0% of Rotten Tomatoes. A goose egg. Goose egg. Okay, nothing. So no, you know how what, you know what kind of shit you're getting into from the beginning. Um, as often we said, one of the worst movies ever made. I can understand why. I know I did argue and say that's not the worst I've ever seen, but like I'm gonna say, I'm gonna repeat it like a broken record. I don't care. It's still one of the worst I've ever seen. Not the worst, but one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. So thank you, Campbell Faye. No, seriously, thanks. Thank you so I could sit through this finally and uh, watch what is considered one of, one of the worst movies of all time and see for myself if it's a, if it really is that bad. And it is. It is. The retro cult classic, my ass. Who the fuck calls this a cult classic? It's got a 0% of Rotten Tomatoes. It's got a 2.8 on, on IMDb. Who calls this a cult classic? What are you smoking, MGM? Anyway, if you like the film... Be my guest. That's all I gotta say. Love it. Enjoy it. Cherish Garbage Pail Kids movie. That, but I'm I'm not one of them. Okay, I'm not not one of them. Um, what's interesting about the the film is that it was originally planned. It was it had a completely original. It com originally had a completely different idea for the movie. Uh, John Carl Buechler was considered to direct the movie. And his version of the story is going to be a straight-up horror film, in which the Garbage Pail Kids would have spawned from radioactive sludge to found its way to a garbage can filled with broken dolls, turning them into serial killers. I'm going to be honest, 
I'd rather see that movie because when I think what these these the, the puppets, the way that these garbage pail kids look, they look like demented monsters from my worst nightmare. So it makes sense that if they were in an actual horror film, then I'd be then I'd be like, okay, the, the, the makeup design is perfect, but cute, likable, whatever, gross. Uh, lovable characters? Fuck no. They look like they're haunt my nightmares and haunt my daymares for years to come. Doug Walker, yeah, he said that this is the absolute worst film he's ever reviewed and probably the worst he has ever seen. I've seen worse. It's still pretty bad. It's pretty goddamn bad. It's the first movie ever to be based on a trading card slash sticker series. Not the last, because it's Mars Attacks, but I think Mars Attacks is the last one. Uh, final, the final, final cinema feature of Anthony Newley. According to the actor who played Juice character, Anthony Newley stayed to the end of the movie because he believed in the project. <laughs> he believed in the project. Okay. This is, like I said, director Rod Amatel's last movie. For good reason. The picture was nominated for Worst Picture at the Hastings Bad Cinema Society's 10th Stinkers Bad Movie Awards in 1987. Didn't win. I'm surprised it didn't. What beat it out in 1987? What the hell beat this out in 1987? I'd like to know. There was plans for a sequel. Thank God that didn't happen. I'd have to gouge in my own eyes at. Uh, the Garbage Pail Kid facial puppet head masks were required detail work for facial animation prior to filming. The heads were not properly completed by the effects team because of financial reasons and the time factor related to filming. Rod Amato, in spite of the unfinished heads, made the film on schedule, expecting the puppet head effects animation improved during the film schedule. It didn't. They didn't even match with the words they were saying half the time. It was just this weird, creepy, fucking animatronic nightmares. Uh, the, the, uh, demon babies from hell. I mean, Chucky looks fucking adorable compared to the Garbage Pail Kids. Um... A portrait visible in Manziti's shop is the painting from Troll. Oh, that's where that painting is from. Well, not like I remember that it's from Troll. Because like, I give a shit about Troll. That movie sucks. This isn't... I wouldn't even call this one of those so bad it's good movies. Like Troll 2. Troll 2 is hilarious. It's got hilariously over-the-top stupid lines of dialogue. This doesn't even have stupid fun lines of dialogue. I might have chuckled at one or two lines. That's it. It's got a dumb idea. It's got some stupid silly shit. So it, it ends up being a train wreck you can't look away from while you're watching the movie, but you're still wanting to fucking, you know, you're still wanting to, I don't know, fucking gouge your eyes out, eat them, shit them out of your ass, fucking don't want to watch this, get up, go look on the internet, see if there's any comments on your YouTube channel, uh, <laughs> Check what the check when the preseason football game is coming on the, the, tonight. You know, just anything to take your mind off of this obnoxious, gross, fucking disgusting piece of shit. Anyway, the movie was filmed in Van Nuys Warehouse, off slash behind the north of Sepul Sepulveda Boulevard during the hot summer months, requiring air conditioned facilities for both. Front of the warehouse, production office, costume dressing rooms with the stage area located behind. The exterior sli backslide slash rear of the warehouse building was adapted with a street shop facade tied with an interior shop set on stage. Anthony Newley's dressing room was trailer was located opposite the warehouse back street facade. The shop interior, the basement sets were permanent, while the motorcycle gang's bar, which is t titled the world's most dangerous bar. Yeah, that's just what it says. The most dangerous bar. I think I said oh, that was like the world's deadliest or most dangerous bar. I don't fucking remember. I don't fucking care if I'm right or not. Uh, the shop interior basement and sets were permanent. The motorcycle gang's bar, a fashion show were swing sets, clearing space for the other film sets constructed for the film. Other locations were within a 10 mile radius of the home base warehouse stage. Bob Jillson and Hub Braden really enjoyed working with director producer Rod Amatow because he appreciated their effort and work on his project. Purposely, purposely inject, interjecting humorous details and touches under the sets and the set dressing. Rod always picked up on them their treatments. An example was the bar biker bar set. After researching a West Hollywood biker bar, the top of the bar imitated the actual biker bar, dressed with a chorus line of teddy bears. The peanut barrel was a child's toy chest, the giant open top football filled with peanuts for the cast to eat and to throw. The sidewall with bike parts and wheels, like a mad bike sculpture blowing out of the wall with police boots extending over the handlebars, fenders, and wheels. 
and Amato went nuts with laughter having a great experience filming the scenes in the set. I'm glad he had a good time, because I didn't have a, that nearly as much of a good time watching this shit. Uh, another thing I'd probably say that I thought was okay about the film was the soundtrack. I mean, they used um, they used um, a song I like by Ed Kepper. I think it's like Ed Kuepper called N Not a Soul Around, which I remember was used in the soundtrack for Teen Wolf 2. Teen Wolf 2 is not a good movie either, but I'd probably say it's better than this. That's not saying much, because Teen Wolf 2 sucks. I remember growing up with that movie, though, but I like the song Not a Soul Around by Ed, K Ed Kuepper. It's got a really catchy beat. But the music was perfect. I mean, that was a perfect song choice for the Garbage Pail Kids movie. Because if you have decided to have a party, you're like, Hey, who wants to watch the Garbage Pail Kids movie with me? Call up your friends. There won't be a soul around to watch it with you. Let's <laughs> say, fuck you. I'm not watching Garbage Pail Kids. I'd rather watch Sharknado too. Anyway, uh, so, <laughs> I actually didn't mind the soundtrack, I have to be honest. And some of the performances weren't that bad. Anthony Newley had sort of a, it looked like he actually had some fun with the roles, Captain Manzini. It wasn't, he didn't have much to do, but it looked like he actually took it somewhat seriously, which is funny. It looked like he had some fun with the role. Probably didn't, it was probably hell. Mackenzie Aston as Dodger, despite the absolutely fey gay outfits he had to wear, one were made one that made him look like a a fey ringleader in a circus. Uh, Mackenzie Aston, I didn't mind him. I thought he was alright. I don't think he was nearly as talented or as good as his brother his older brother, Sean. Sean Aston. But uh he showed some talent and he sh he would show that later when he got a little bit older and starred in Iron Iron Will, which I think is one of the more underrated Disney movies. He played the main character, Will, in Iron Will. And I always liked Iron Will. And I thought Mackenzie Aston did a great job in that film. Uh, Katie Barberi is Tangerine. She's pretty... She's a, she's, she's a good-looking good looking girl, but not the best actress in the world. So you can see why she didn't get a lot of roles uh, after this. She had a few other roles, like a TV and so forth, but not much else. Ron McLaughlin is Juice. but a good asshole. I don't know if he's related to, to Kyle McLaughlin. I hope not. I didn't think Kyle Lachlan, you know, is that, you know, but probably he's not an asshole in real life. Um, Ron McLaughlin. Is he really related to, I, I'm really curious. I I need to, need to figure this out to see if he's at all related to, um, there's no info about him, so I don't think he is. If he was related to Kyle McLaughlin, I would, you would have known a little bit more. You know, full bio doesn't even have anything other than he was an actor known for Garbage Pail Kids, Back to Back, and Silk Stockings. That's it. So, he played Juice, who was literally one of the most I, 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 despicable bu, bu, you know, bullies, bu, 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 bullies in, in film I've seen, really. I mean, he's such an asshole. I was like, what is his deal what is his deal with this like street gang is he he's a psychopath he's fucking beating up on this little kid he, he you know taking his money okay in the middle of a park where people are watching and then he actually goes even further and takes this kid just because he's hanging out with his girl because he's just helping his girlfriend find some stuff for her clothes because he works at an antique store no this guy's a fucking psychopath so it's like Oh, don't you dare even look at my girl. Or I'm going to open a goddamn sewer manhole. I'm going to throw you in the sewer. I'm going to have my other chick, who's not really my girlfriend, but could be. It could be banging her on the side. She's the strong one, I guess, because she's stronger than me. So she ends up turning a lever and pours shit, like, you know, like a base of sewage waste all over this poor kid. And then just leave him there. To drown in sewage wastes. To drown literally in shit. What the fuck is wrong with these people? There's being a bully, and then there's being a psychopath, and the juice is a psychopath. He's a psycho. He's not a bully. He's gone way far behind. He's got way. He's got way beyond bullying him. He's a psycho. So. It's literally like, what the fuck is this guy's problem with this kid? And then at the same time, this kid has this crush, uh, you know, Dodger, 
has this crush on Tangerine, Katie Barberi, and you're like, she, he, she's like in her 20s, kid. What, 13, 14? You're too young. What are you doing? Now I understand where the Naked Brothers Band show got its inspiration for its love story from this piece of shit. Because the Naked Brothers Band show that was on Nickelodeon for a while had a little kid who was in love with a girl who was twice his age. Which, and that actually became a relationship that actually worked for some reason because it's Nickelodeon. And here in the Garbage Bill Kids movie, hey, it didn't work because she was using his ass. So, although he did have one really good burn for her at the end, which I'll get to soon enough. But anyway, yeah, this fucking bully is like, what the fuck is a problem? Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Harold Christ on crutches, man. What the fuck? Anyway, yeah, literally, that's that was why I had that reaction at the beginning of this rant. It's like, what the fuck did I just watch? Because it's not a movie that seems like it's just for kids. Because it does have some jokes that kids wouldn't get. Or jokes that are just, like, really disturbing. Like one of the Garbage Pail Kids, Rooster Greg, is like, oh, the, the Garbage Pail Kids are complaining, we don't have any money. And Rooster Greg's like, Oh, well, he puffs out his switchblade knife. He's like, oh, well, how about we cut out some IOUs? <laughs> so you're going to fucking mug and murder some people for money? That's <laughs> some kid's movie. That's, that's great. Anyway, the beginning of the movie starts off perfectly for a movie of this caliber. It starts off with a garbage, pan, a garbage can spaceship. I messed up saying can't because I still am, my mind is still blown by the opening of this movie. A garbage can spaceship is seen flying near Earth, and it's it's not not really flying; it's tumbling in in space and dumping all of these garbage pail kids cards right at that screen. So that's how you get the that's the opening titles, and the same garbage garbage can is then shown inside an antique shop owned by Captain Manzini. They couldn't get away with calling him Captain Kangaroo because, you know, for rights issues. If they could get if they could get Captain Kangaroo to be in the movie, I'm pretty sure they would they would do that. Captain Kangaroo and the garbage pail kids. <laughs> a boy named Dodger is being assaulted by four bullies in a park. Yeah, and these aren't and like once again, these bullies are psychopaths. And they're not and what's also really strange about this is they're not kids. They're not his age. They're like in their 20s, almost 30 years old, and they're fucking bullying some kid in a park and throwing his ass in some dirty water and stealing some money out of his pocket. It's like, what the fuck is up with this gang? Do they terrorize all these kids? Do they just terrorize this one kid? I mean, why isn't anybody doing something about this? Why isn't anybody doing anything about this? Why isn't anybody fucking calling the cops? Why? Why is this being allowed to happen? I mean, wouldn't people be worried these guys are pedophiles or some shit? Well, what the fuck? And also, well, I think I understand why. I'll get to soon and why enough. Why I think that why nobody's doing anything about it. I'll just get it, get it out of the way now. You know why nobody's doing anything about these psychopathic group of like 25, 30 year old bullies who beat up on this poor kid and steal his money and want to drown him in shit? Uh... Because this is the same town in the same universe that has uh, a state home for the ugly in it. Not making that up. There really is a state home for the ugly in this movie. Where ugly people are put in prison, in jails, and then are transferred into garbage, and garb into garbage trucks and crushed to death. Yeah, that's that, that. Somebody wrote that shit. Uh, uh, it must have been high, and, it, and I don't think it was the good shit either. It was the bad shit. It was the bad trip. They were on a bad trip when they wrote the screenplay for this movie. Anyway, so yeah, Juice is an ass, and he steals Dodger's money and drops him in a puddle. Dodger then goes to Manzini's antique shop where he works, because I guess he works at the antique shop. And Manzini takes Dodger's clothes and cleans them with magic, while warning them to stay, warning him to stay away from the garbage can. Oh, also, I forgot about after them credits. You hear a little bit of the garbage pail kids. They're running around at night, and they're causing a ruckus. And Manzini says this: 
I, I remember this line because it was just stupid. And he just is like, oh, oh, you better not be, you know, making too much noise in there. You better not be doing anything. Uh, you don't want to see me surprised. You don't want to surprise me. It's like, don't, don't you mean you don't want to piss me off? Don't you want to mean you don't want to see me angry? Surprised? Isn't that good? Isn't that a good thing? I mean, I guess there are such things as some bad surprises, but I've never heard that term be used in that in that context. You don't want to see me surprised. It's like, you don't want to see me angry? Surprised? So you walk in and there's a the garbage spell kids making some mess. You'd be like, oh, you surprised me, damn it! <laughs> I mean, come on. I told you not to surprise me. So he gets pissed when he gets surprised? Is that it? <laughs> Don't ever do a surprise party for this guy. And <laughs> he fucking rip your head off. <laughs> anyway, um... I just, I just remember that. Because it was like, it was so stupid. And it's a stupid movie. And, you know, there's a lot of other stupid shit. But, yeah, really. Surprised. Yeah. <laughs> this movie surprises me. Anyway, uh... So anyway, uh, Manzini takes Doctor's clothes, cleans them with magic, and then tells him to wear this dashiki. <laughs> and the kid's like, oh, is this a dress? No, it's a dashiki. I got it from some African guy I helped out with. And, you know, you need to learn about the Western world, son. And I'm like, what the hell? I never thought I'd see a little kid wearing a dashiki in my entire life. But here it is. White boy wearing a dashiki. In the garbage kill, the garbage bail kids movie. Fuck, can't even fucking pronounce the goddamn name. Don't blame me. Can't pronounce it because I don't want to fucking say it. So anyway, um, fucking garbage bail kids. So he tells Dodger to stay away from the garbage can. Later, Dodger sees Tangerine Juice's girlfriend. And Jareen Juice, who seems to be the most compassionate one towards Dodger and tries to persuade her to buy something. Dodger is attracted to Tangerine and covertly smells her hair while she's distracted. Yeah, because he's a creeper. He's, she's looking for something and he's like... Ah. Right. This is the kind of kid who's going to grow up and smell panties. Seriously, he's going to be the panty-smelling creeper guy. You know, it's like... Mm, panties... Mmm, this smells like tangerines. Look <laughs> this kid is messed up. I, I, got, I got a dirty mind, too. But seriously, smelling her hair and acting like... Mmm, tangerines. <laughs> God. Love her bullies and enter the shop and attempt to rough up Dodger again because they're a bunch of asses. For some reason, I don't know why they want to beat up on this one kid. And where the hell is this kid's parents? The movie never tells you, and never shows anything, if he has any parents. Where the fuck are his parents? I mean, this kid getting beat up on all the time, almost got drowned to death in shit, and sewage water, and sewage, and it might be, it said toxic waste on there too, so did he get toxic waste too? I don't, no, I don't, just really, so he manages it out with them though, with his awesome basketball skills. Hey, I, I, I could, I even, I did a better job dribbling when I was a kid, and I wasn't that great of a dribbler, but, <laughs> but he kind of reminded me of me too. Like I had a good shot, I had a good jump shot and everything, but I wasn't the best dribbler in the world. So here he is doing like half-ass dribbling, trying to spin the ball on his finger, and failing. I was like, yeah, that's me as a kid trying to spin the ball on my finger and failing miserably. I could never get that to work. And he just throws the basketball at this one guy. And it distracts him enough. Like, and then this one girl, the other girl, she tries to kick the kid and her leg gets stuck. And the kid, like, caresses her leg. You're like, what the fuck? Is he got a free, he got a free grab. And it's just, what the hell am I watching? And then the kid ends up getting away, but then they end up. But then, in, during the tussle, the garbage can gets knocked over and spills out this green goop. And then the bullies then bring Doctor into a sewer, and they handcuffed him to a rail, and they open a sewage pipe on him. It's pretty much going to kill the kid. He's going to drown in raw sewage. Dodge, where are the Ninja Turtles when you need them, man? Where, you know, it's in the sewer. Where are those Ninja Turtles? 
Probably they didn't want to be anywhere near Ross. They didn't want to be near raw sewage. That's why. I mean, they, they live in the sewer, but you know, they, 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 there's there's a there's a line that they don't want to cross, and the, and the line that's covered in shit. Turtles don't want to cross that. I don't blame them. I mean, if they did, they'd hang out with that uh, fucking trash guy. I don't remember what the fuck his name is. Muckman or some shit. I think it's Muckman. Or maybe that's a He-Man character. I don't fucking remember. Anyway. However, you know, the talk, trash can gets knocked over. The bully said bring Dodger to a sewer and attempt to murder him. And then Dodger ends up getting saved, though, by these little mysterious people named the Garbage Pail Kids. So Manzini returns and he's upset. He's very surprised that the Garbage Pail Kids have been released from their ca trash can and introduces Dodger to each of them. Greaser Greg is a leather jacket clad greaser with a violent attitude and a switchblade. Messy Tessie is a girl with a constantly running nose. Wendy Win Winston is an insane boy who wears a Hawaiian shirt and often farts violently. Valerie Vomit is a girl who throws up on command. Foul Phil is a whining, hungry baby with halitosis who constantly asks characters that they are his mommy or daddy, and I want to kick him through a goddamn field goal post into fucking outer space, back into that goddamn space trash can, and it's in the motherfucking sun! I want to take all of these characters, except Alligator, I can deal with that guy, he can hang out with me, and I'll feed him some toes every now and then, and some assholes who fuck with me, and... Everyone else can go back to fucking in the trash can in space and get the fuck out of it. Anyway, because uh, I just thought they were really annoying and obnoxious. Especially Foul Phil. Mommy, are you my mommy? Are you my daddy? No! You know what this is? This is a fist! <laughs> and you're ten seconds away the most from the most embarrassing moment of your life, you fucking garbage pail kid. Anyway... This is my fist. Meeting your face. Stupid kid. Anyway, uh, Nat Nerd is an obese, acne, and riddled boy who poorly dresses like a superhero and wets his pants frequently because it's supposed to be hilarious. He, he pisses himself. Like, <laughs> he pees himself all the time. And he sounds like an old man. So it's like, eh, it's Grandpa? You know, to nurse somebody, it's like your grandfather escaped from the nur got away from the nursing home and just wetting himself all the time. That's sad. That's sad. It really is. Oh, please. Oh, 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 grandson. Oh, oh, like, Grandpa, not again. Not on the rug. <laughs> anyway. Fucking <laughs> garbage bill. An alligator, the group's natural reader. Leader? Reader? What the fuck? Ah! So he's fucked up my brain cells. This so fucking stupid and bad killed half my goddamn brain cells. Fuck. Anyway, he's the group's natural leader, and he's also an anthropomorphic half person, half alligator who has an appetite for human toes. Because it's always there's always a time for it's always toe night. It's always a good time for toes. <laughs> toe night. <laughs> toes but I, I didn't mind i don't know what it was like i thought he was kind of kind of cool all right alligator i mean he got drunk in a bar come on he'd be a fun guy he'd be a fun garbage pail kid to hang out with he's a fucking alligator man that only has an appetite for human toes okay hey fuck it you know we'll give him the toe from that chick from the big lebowski who cut off her toe for money and, and you know, and then you know, me bite off the toes of some assholes and fuck with me. That he's fine. I'm you know, hang out at my house, whatever. Hang out with Howard the Duck. They'll, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll be good friends. They'll be good. <laughs> anyway, Mancine explains that the kids are forbidden from going into public because they'll be attacked by the normies, normal people, and he can't get the kids to go back in the garbage can without magic. And nowadays, in the 20th century, you can't find an alligator tooth or bat swing or any of the stuff that you need for magic tr magic uh, tricks, I guess. Because it's part of the joke, which isn't funny. The next day, though, Dodger goes to Tangerine to a nightclub where she sells, slow she sells clothes she designed herself. Fuck. Can't fucking say a word. I mean, it's fucking stop. It's like I can't enunciate. Because the movie's fuck with my brain cells. Not only that, it's because my uh, speech patterns. I gotta get this shit over with. I end up a fucking vegetable. <laughs> uh -huh. 
So anyway, she sells clothes she designed herself, and they look horrible. They're terrible looking clothes. I don't know why anybody would buy them, but it's the late 80s, and man, some of the fashions were horrible. So, anyway, Dodger behaves awkwardly when Tangerine removes her shirt to sell it. Of course, she's like, ooh, boobies. <laughs> and then Dodger then hides when Juice shows up. And meanwhile, the kid's in, he just hides in her duffel bag and doesn't suffocate to death. And then meanwhile, the kids steal a Pepsi truck. Yeah, they steal a Pepsi truck. And then they make this line, this crack this line. We're part of the Pepsi generation. Yeah, you know what part of the Pepsi generation? You know what part of gener Pepsi generation you are? You're part of the evil Pepsi generation. That explains it. That I can I understand it now. These foul, obnoxious, annoying fucking twats were created by Pepsi. It makes perfect sense. Pepsi is the most evil soda company in the world. I mean, they're responsible for terrorizing this poor girl in the outing. They're responsible for all this shit. And they're responsible for the garbage pail kids. Damn you, Pepsi. Damn you to hell. Anyway, they end up flattening Juice's car with it. And then they have a campfire in an alley with stolen food. And the next morning, the Garbage Bell kids recover from their hangovers, of uh, Pepsi hangovers, and they give Dodger a jacket they sewed, which makes him look like a fey ringleader at a circus. He looks horrible. It just looks like the most... It looks so fey, so gay, so lame, so bad, fashion crime, everything. And it looks like, you know, he's... And then there's a later outfit he wears. He looks like he's he's going to go uh, headline the Blue Oyster Club. <laughs> God. He's going to go hang out with the village people and can't stop the music. Anyway, the jacket impresses Tangerine because I guess she just loves shitty clothes. And who asks Dodger to get more clothes so she can sell them. The kids get bored and decide to wear disguises to go out in public. And first they go to a theater playing Three Stooges shorts and behave obnoxiously. And really, this movie does the impossible and makes the Three Stooges, clips of the Three Stooges, not funny. And, um, and I'm going to be the biggest fan of Three Stooges, but I can laugh at them. But I can laugh at the clips they had here because it was in such a shitty movie. And they chose some of the worst clips to show. And uh, they weren't really that funny. So they behave obnoxiously. Like, steal people's food, uh, sneeze, fart on people. Am I great? Whoa, wonderful. This is very entertaining. I love this. Um, and then Allie and Wendy go to Allie and Gator and Wendy Winston go to a bar where they start a fight with bar bikers. Which, Wendy Winston farts so, has a fart so bad and so smelly that it knocks off this dude's mustache and his beard and knocks him out. Yeah, explosive flatulence. If I want to see explosive flatulence, I'll watch the spleen in Mystery Man. Um, so anyway. And I guess because of that, they end up getting won over by the the the, the bikers and the world's most dangerous bar get won over by the garbage pail kids heroics and they celebrate with beers. Yeah, PG rated movie and they're celebrating with alcohol. The kids then make more clothes for Dodger after someone stealing the sewing machine from the non-union sweatshop. And then they sing a song about working together. You know. You know. That really catchy song. La 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 la. It was like, all things are working with each other. Blah, blah. All things are possible by working with each other. La 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 la. It's catchy, but it's a shitty song. I mean, it's better than pumping and blowing from, from the pirate movie, but still, I mean, God, it's just definitely just sticking your head. And I, when I first heard the song, I thought they were singing. All oh, things aren't possible if we we could work with each other. All oh, things aren't possible if we start working with each other. Na 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 no 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 no. 
But of course, that's not not what it was. That all things are possible if the garbage pail kids work together. <laughs> oh man, god damn it! Anyway, Tangerine ends up selling the clothes, and she begins to prepare for a fashion show based on them, where she takes the credit. She meets the kids that are repulsed by them. And but realizes that she can't take advantage, but she realizes that she can take advantage of their designs, so she does. And also takes advantage of of Dodger because he's a snow blind or tit blind or pussy blind by this chick, and she's using him and abusing him. And the night of the fashion show, Tangerine locks the garbage pail kids in the basement of the antique shop so they don't escape. And soon they are captured by Juice and his gang who bring them to the state home for the ugly. Yep, a prison where people too ugly for society are brought and executed. Yep. And some of them aren't really that ugly. They're just too short. Or he's too hairy. Or too silly. A clown that's too silly. Or Santa Claus because he's too fat. You laughing yet? Are we having fun yet? No, I'd rather... No, I'm not. I, I actually think I would cut off my own, both my ears and hang them around my neck and watch this shit again. It'd fucking be worth it for me. It would be just as painful, but it would be, it, I would be able to get it over with a lot faster. Um, anyway, um... Fucking... Stupid. Stupid-ass movie. Stay home for the ugly. So anyway, the people there included the two fat Santa Claus, the two bald Gandhi, the two skinny Abraham Lincoln, and also a, a little person. And Manzini and Dodger help them escape and head to the fashion show. Of course, they get help from the most dangerous bars in the world, from the bikers, and and the kid ends up realizing that things, you know, he was being betrayed. The kid, the girl was using him, and they go on to face off against uh, Juice and his gang. And it's really anticlimactic. All Greaser Greg does, he just Swings on a rope and hits one of the bully guys. And then, because he hit him, the guy knocks over a, a, a was it like an, a fucking a fire extinguisher and it knocks out Juice. And then you get a clusterfuck of an ending where they show up with a fashion show, Wendy Winston farts, and sends everybody away. And then it becomes just a clusterfuck of garbage pail kids tripping the bad guys and getting in their way and so forth they even lift up a uh, uh, Dodger and, and then you know do like a, it's kind of like the scene you know remember in, in X-Men where they take uh, where Colossus picks up one of the, one of the X-Men and throws him in the air it's like a human cannonball so they do that with a kid and it throws him up and he does a backflip in midair and lands with his legs on the top of a, a, a juice's neck and he just starts punching the crap out of him. You're like, yeah, beat that bully. But then it's like the complete opposite because he's crying when he's doing it. And then he's like, and then he's going to get it ready to do it some more. And then uh, the, the you know, Manzini comes and says, don't do it. You know, stop. And then he's like, <laughs> you're right. It's not, it's, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Then he hugs, and then he hugs, uh, uh, Manzini, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, uh, <laughs> it's not worth it, it's not worth it, it's not fucking worth it, it's not worth it, it's not worth it, it's not worth it, it's not worth it, <laughs> god damn it, it's not worth it, anyway, fuck, not worth it, it's not worth it, <sighs> Whew. Like I said, it's not one of the worst movies I've ever. It's one of the worst I've ever seen. Not the worst, but I'll say this: it's one of the worst movies I've seen recently. Drive me to insanity like that. I mean, it's not worth it. Anyway, fuck it. Let's get this shit over with. Oh god. So the fashion show gets ruined. And the garbage trail kids show up and just, you know, clusterfuck. Like, uh, Valerie vomit, vomits all over two of the bullies, you know, two of the members of the gang, the other girl and the other skinny guy. And then, who's wearing a fishnet outfit. And then, uh, Dodger kicks, um, Juice's ass. A grown man's ass. A grown man gets emasculated by some fucking kid and he gets his ass handed to him. 
and a bunch of, you know, demented Cabbage Patch kids from hell. And, um, then, uh, Tangerine, later that night, she ends up apologizing to Dodger and asks him if they could just be friends. But Dodger doesn't accept her apology. And he, he gives her the ultimate burn. No. Because I don't find you pretty anymore. Oh, snap! You think you Snap! Oh damn, you got shut down, Tangerine. He doesn't think you're pretty anymore. Would have been better if you just said no. Cause I think cause I think you're an ugly bitch now. <laughs> of course it's PG, but still you had garbage belt kids getting drunk and talking about mugging and killing people for money. But hey, you know. Hey, that's a little bit on the side here. I mean this is the 80s PG we're talking about. 80s PG had nudity and shit. Anyway, um, but there are no tits here. There's no tits to be found. So, so the captain then tries to sing the Garbage Bill Kids song backwards to coax them back in the garbage can, but it doesn't work. And the kids end up sneaking out, and they ride stolen ATVs away to raise more havoc. Yeah, that's it. The movie ends with them escaping, and they're out in the world now to fuck with us normies and... Give us, give our kids nightmares, and also make our lives a living hell. Great ending. I mean, wonderful. I mean, fuck this movie. Fuck the Garbage Pail Kids movie. It's a terrible piece of shit. One of the worst movies I've ever seen. Not the worst ever. I mean, Blood Voyage is worse because nothing fucking happens in that movie. At least there's something happening here. It's not necessarily good, but at least there's something happening. I'm like, Blood Voyage, but... It doesn't, like I said, it's still a piece of shit. And if you like it, be my guest, but I don't. I mean, this movie was painful to watch. I, it was, I literally wanted to sc scream and pull my hair out while I was watching this damn film. It's not funny. It's not entertaining. It gets boring after a while. The Garbage Pail Kids are annoying. Alligator I can deal with. That's it. Everyone else is fucking annoying. And get in their trash can and get the fuck out of Dodge. Go back to Wisconsin. Uh, and uh, just... I really don't know what else to say about the Garbage Pail Kids movie. It's like the longest review probably this movie has ever had. It's probably never had a rant this long. And uh, fuck it. I did it because... I, I, I'm just, Literally, there were moments in this film I was just sit, sitting there like this. Seriously, there's a lot of that in that movie. I didn't have any words to describe what the fuck I was watching half the time. Um, but if that's your idea of entertainment, be my guest. Anyway, I really don't know what else to say about the Garbage Pail Kids movies. Except I just, I'd rather watch Ghoulies. I mean, Ghoulies is not a great movie either, but fuck it, it's better than this shit. I'll watch Munchies. Or Munchie Strikes Back. That's probably a piece of crap too. But I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's a lot better than this. I'll watch a fucking trauma movie. I don't like trauma. I'll watch a goddamn trauma movie. I'll watch Turtles 3. I'll watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Over this shit. Anyway, I really don't want to say about the Garbage Pail Kids movie. Except a rate out of 5 stars. Fucking 5 Really? Out of 5? <laughs> for this fucking piece of gutter trash this person's piece of sewage spewing shit pile of a movie really gonna rate it no get the fuck you fucking shitty ass movie wasting my goddamn time I can say now at least now I can say I saw it I saw the garbage pail kids movie yeah give myself a golf clap <laughs> <laughs> I saw the Garbage Pail Kids movie. Good for me. I sat through the one sitting. Pat myself on the back. For watching this pathetic pile of crap. Anyway, I don't know to say, except thanks for watching my rant on the Garbage Pail Kids movie. Um, I'm going to go vomit now, so I'll see you later.